Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Nowadays, the survival of the cancer uh, patients has been increased a lot and improved. And at the same time, uh, due to uh, treatment, the complication, especially cardiovascular complication, has been increased too. In other words, uh, cardiovascular uh, complication and disorder is the second lead uh, cause of the death among the cancer patients. The uh, complication of the cardiovascular complication of the cancer therapy can be divided to two categories. One, those that related to the uh, radiation uh, and another due to chemotherapy that <coughs> we are going to talk about in those, uh, these two category a little not too much detail but at least a more practical way here they are uh, all those important complications of cardiovascular and uh, uh, those agent and factor that cause uh, those complications. Now let's go one by one and start uh, talking about each of them. Radiation induced heart disease or RID. The, about half of the patient with cancer uh, they go to the radiotherapy too. So the complication of the radiation and radiotherapy will be expect is not too much low. Actually, uh, almost over up to 80 percent of the patient that they go to the chem uh, radi radiotherapy when they have radiation in the chest for any those reason like the breast, lymphoma, Hodgkin, and all the esophagus and all of them, they will have some kind of degree cardiovascular uh, complication and disorder. The risk of this complication dependent of the some factor. One of them is radiation dose. If it goes more or longer, the risk increased. Generally, for each gray uh, radiation, the risk of the uh, coronary uh, disorder, for example, increased up to 7.4%. Age when the, the patient is a younger and go to the under radiation, of course, because the longer time and life, and so the risk and uh, the prevalence of that complication increase too. Another is gender, especially postmenopausal, that in uh, more common in female. Those complications, some of them, and pre-exciting. Uh, Cardiovascular disorder, if the patient has any CAD, valvular disorder, the risk increased. And uh, timing, uh, usually all those radi uh, radi radiation uh, induced or related to the radiation, cardiovascular disorder, average, uh, it happened 10 to 30 years after radiation. So don't expect, except some of them, uh, for example, acute pericarditis, it can happen after a few days or a few weeks, but most of them, uh, other uh, complication, usually average is 10 to 30, that we go talk about each of them separately. At the top of the, on top of the radiation induced cardiovascular disorder is coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease, it can happen up to 85% of the patient that go on the radiation and is the most common cardiovascular related to the radiation. And the reason is damage to the intima and, or endothelia of the coronary artery and due to that process of inflammation and finally atherosclerosis, plaque and uh, blockage. Most of the arthrosclerosis and CAD blockage and in the case of the radiation happen in the proximal or around the ostium of the coronary or the, uh, and so most of the time is extensive. Clinical manifestation in this uh, group of the patient can be a little different actually the atypical form is more common 
compared to their uh, normal population. The atypical pattern is more common in this group because of the usually those patients they have damage to the nerve and pain and all those uh, vagus and other nerve. So many of those patients can represent atypical or asymptomatic, unfortunately. So being aware of that is very important and other uh, most of the cases even is like the classic ischemic heart disease valvular disorder uh, disease in this patient is after the after the uh, coronary artery disease is common again is the uh, since is due to the radiation effects the damage to the uh, valve and cause it, the prevalence is about 25% in 10 years and 60% in 20 years after radiation. Most common valve involved is aorta because it's the most anterior valve and location and the orientation of the valve. Aorta is involved that most of the uh, type is at first they start like the aortic insufficient after that aortic stenosis uh, it can uh, involve any other valve too uh, and for uh, mitral valve involvement is a specific and unique opposite of the rheumatic fever that commissure and the tip of the leaflet involved in the Valvular disorder of the mitral valve due to radiation. Usually, a classic form is involving of the aortoventricular at this level, and valve, aorta valve, and aortoventricular, aortomitral uh, continuity at this become thickening, hyperecho, thickening, sclerosing, and little by little calcification. Next cardiovascular complication of radiotropy is uh, cardiomyopathy. In this group of the patient, cardiomyopathy is uh, due to the myocardial necrosis, uh, scattering myocardial necrosis and replacement with the collagen and fibrotic tissue. So for that reason, most common form of cardiomyopathy due to the radiation is restrictive uh, cardiomyopathy. So we have kind of the diastolic, uh, severe diastolic dysfunction. The prevalence depending of the cause of uh, the background of the cancer and uh, other treatment, especially if go with the uh, chemotherapy too, the re uh, prevalence of cardiomyopathy can go up to 10, uh, from 10 to up 60% of the cases and average uh, interval from the radiation to the uh, establishing of this uh, complication is three to six years. Another one is pericardial uh, disease. Uh, the acute pericarditis after a single radiation with high dose of the 20 to uh, 40 centigrade is uh, not uncommon, but uh, usually is mild acute pericarditis and is due to the inflammation. But the in the general group of the patient with radiation, acute pericarditis is not common. Most presentation of the pericardial disease after radiation is constrictive pericarditis that uh, uh, represent by thickening of the pericardium and calcification that cause it uh, constrictive pericarditis and sometimes cardiac tamponade. This pattern and type of complication, I mean constrictive pericarditis, usually happen uh, after 10 to 2 decades of radiation. Here we have a classic postmortem uh, gross anatomy of the heart and pericardium. You can see completely thickening, and here is CT scan with the 
hyper, hypertrophy, not hypertrophy, thickening and uh, thickening of the pericardium is very clear. Most of the time we can detect it in echo too. Here is the are those uh, summary of the radiation induced cardiovascular disease. You can pause and review if you need it. Here we have the clinical approach uh, for patient uh, went uh, on their uh, radiation. For that uh, purpose, we have to, every year we have to exam and visit the patient and evaluate all those uh, uh, physical findings related to complication and uh, evaluate uh, risk stratification. Uh, especially blood blood uh, workup, including panel, lipid panel and metabolic and physical exam importance uh, are those respiratory and cardiac. Doesn't matter if the patient is symptomatic or asymptomatic. If patient has any sign and symptom of the uh, any sign of the or symptom or finding related to the cardiovascular disease, we have to do echo. Based on the finding on the echo and other uh, parameter and factors, then we maybe need to uh, MRI of the heart or uh, Lexi. And based on those and other finding, we have to uh, reevaluate patient every five years. Again, it's dependent on the case. Sometimes you go, you do, patient has, for example, coronary artery disease and uh, we do PCI. And of course, in that case, the approach will be different. As I mentioned earlier, briefly, uh, there are many cardiovascular complications in cancer treatment. In this part, I'm going to just focus on chemotherapy-related cardiac dysfunction, or sometimes it's called uh, cancer therapy-related cardiac dysfunction, or chemotherapy-induced cardiomyopathy. Based uh, on the mechanism of those uh, chemotherapy agents uh, related to the cardiotoxicity, we can divide them in two groups or category, type 1 and type 2. In type 1, uh, that the top of them are uh, anthracyclines, those cardiac toxicity effect is due to the damage and necrosis of the cardiomyocyte. So those effects are irreversible and they are those dependent and ha they have uh, accumulative effect. The category two, that top of them uh, is anti-HER2 antibody or anti-human epidermal GRU receptor 2 monoclonal antibody. They are, uh, their effect uh, is reversible and uh, those effect is not dose dependent and they don't have accumulative effect. And the most important, uh, Im important point with this type of the cardiac dysfunction is detecting at the early stage. Because if we detect at early stage and uh, uh, stop the medication treatment and we use uh, those uh, cardioprotective agents like the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or, and so on, the over 70% of the patient uh, get uh, their cardiac function improve and almost 10% of them will recover fully. So detect, detecting in early stage of those cardiac toxicity is very critical. For that purpose, the first uh, step and first tool for uh, evaluation and diagnosis is echocardiography. And after that is uh, cardiac MRI or CMR. That is gold standard for evaluation of the chemotoxicity of the, 
dose on their heart, but we use it as a supplement or in those cases that echocardiography are not completely conclusive. For, uh, for dealing with the patient uh, with cancer that they are going to go to the cancer therapy, uh, we have to do two uh, step, two step. First, at baseline, and second, for follow-up uh, and surveillance. Now, let's go uh, see each of them what should we do at each stage. For baseline, we have to do beside of the full echo study that include all those uh, view and protocol beside of the uh, FAC, fractional area change of right ventricle, uh, TR, uh, S prime and E prime of the uh, lateral free wall of tricuspid valve and uh, recording blood pressure, heart rate, and rhythm, we have to do two extra study. The first one is 3D of the left ventricle for measuring volume and ejection fraction. That is uh, very important, and even in some uh, center, if it's because of patient body habitus and situation, we cannot get 3D. Some uh, center recommend uh, MRI of the cardiac. The next one is a global longitudinal strain and this should be very correct and accurate at least with frame rate over 40, traceable endocardium, optimizing image uh, with the minimum uh, variation in the R to R uh, at least in three uh, continuous beats and so on that I explain in two other uh, lectures. You can check it out. The frequency and the protocol for follow-up and surveillance dependent of the baseline study. If in the baseline study uh, all everything was normal, we can do echocardiography every three months as targeted study that I am shortly I'm going to talk about what is the targeted study. If the baseline is abnormal, we have to refer to the patient to the cardio-oncology service and based on those of finding, uh, we have to risk and uh, identification and risk stratification to the uh, one of these and based on that, we make a decision uh, what we have to do, not we, I mean the uh, cardiac uh, cardiologist and cardio-oncology specialist. They make decision what they have to do. But as for echo, uh, we have to do, if it's abnormal, we have to do like the baseline full study. And uh, based on uh, full study and finding and uh, treatment, the, uh, each stage is uh, personalized and based on that, uh, patient will be follow up. If during study any positive uh, sign of the uh, abnormal and cardiotoxicity show up, uh, we have to uh, do full study. Otherwise, every after three months uh, or up to 12 months, depending on each case, uh, that we uh, cardiology uh, make decision based on each case uh, separately, we can follow up uh, in the tar by the targeted study technique. Now let's see what is the targeted study. Here is a more practical approach for uh, those patients uh, that uh, receive chemotherapy and based on the echocardiography, how we evaluate and follow up that uh, recommended by Dr. Anishi and colleagues. In uh, this situation, 
is when the patient is at the baseline, we have abnormal ejection fraction and how we evaluate and frequency of evaluation uh, for the echocardiography. You can pause it and study by yourself. In targeted study, beside of the plaques and PSAX wall motion, on, uh, we do it. We add on uh, other, uh, uh, we do other study. First of all, we do Simpson measuring left ventricle uh, volume and ejection fraction with the Simpson technique apical four and two. Then we do uh, measured again left ventricle volume and ejection fraction by 3D. Then we go to, we do again uh, gl uh, global longitudinal strain. After that, we go uh, perform full study of the right side that include S prime and E prime of the lateral annulus of tricuspid valve. Uh, FAC uh, that include two dimension uh, diameter and one lens and TAPSI. Uh, TAPSI we do it uh, and then we do if we have the patient TR but try to find any uh, TR we measure pressure gradient of the TR. This is a targeted study. Cardiac toxicity of uh, chemotherapy agent can be uh, diagnosed by uh, two techniques. One of them is biomarkers and second by echocardiography. In echocardiography, whenever the left ventricular ejection fraction drop more than 10 uh, numeric, and goes uh, ejection fraction below 50 percent that is a, a confirmation and positive sign for cardiac toxicity if for example uh, ejection fraction uh, it was at the beginning uh, or baseline or previous was uh, 57 and now it become 47 it is positive but if it was over 62 for example and now it become uh, 51 even drop more than 10 but is still above 50 and is not positive the next group is when uh, we have decline or decreasing of the ejection fraction more than 10 and uh, Ejection fraction is still is equal or more than 50%. Uh, and uh, global longitudinal strain uh, drop more than 15%. In that case, we, uh, there is a probability of subclinical cardiac toxicity that we have to evaluate and correspond with other finding and including uh, biomarkers and other uh, findings, especially if we needed CMR. And the, another situation is when uh, the decline is less than 10 uh, numeric, but uh, ejection fraction value is below 50 percent. In that case, there is a possibility of subclinical cardiac toxicity and should be evaluated and correspond with other finding. And the last situation is when global longitudinal strain drop more than 15%. For example, previous or baseline was uh, 20, minus 20, and now it become minus 16. So it's more than 15% dropped and it is positive sign. Whenever our echocardiographic is not inconclusive or not accurate and there is some suspicions about those uh, evaluation and measurement we have to do uh, CMR or cardiac uh, my, uh, MRI one uh, another thing I forgot to mention in that previous uh, slides that Whenever we don't have global longitudinal strain, uh, not clear endocardium is not very clear, we can use ES prime 
of the mitral valve annulus, spray medial and lateral as a uh, substitute for global longitudinal strain, but still we have other modality that is including CMR is better for evaluation. Unfortunately, data about the biomarkers are not uh, strong and still we don't have a very specific guideline for measuring those biomarkers. Among them, there are two types that uh, at least uh, recommended uh, that we measure them uh, before and during and after treatment that included uh, natriuretic peptide, especially NT pro BNP and troponin I and troponin T. They are good, at least we can uh, correspond with those uh, echocardiographic or CMR finding. Here is a uh, most uh, published recommendation and guideline for frequency of the echocardiography with chemotropic agents. Uh, you can pause it and study if you are interested. Here we have a risk stratification for patient goes uh, to the chemotherapy with the potential risk of cardiotoxicity. You can pause and study. And finally, here is a summary of those uh, recommendations. Pause it and study if you need. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.